Today we are focusing on our sense of taste. What is that like for animals? Is it the same as it is for us or is it different? How sweet it is. Are there foods that you really like and others you'd rather not eat? Wild animals also have favorite foods. Many caterpillars eat only one kind of plant and birds won't eat monarch butterflies because of their bad taste. Cats can't taste sweet things at all. Your taste buds are on your tongue, but you may be surprised to find out what body parts other animals use for tasting. This is the swallowtail butterfly. This is a different one. This is a European one, but the um, anise swallowtail butterfly is what we have in the garden right now. I've just been seeing them all over the place and it's been so fun. If you were a butterfly, you would have taste buds on your feet. You'd walk around on a flower before deciding if it was good enough to eat. Your tongue would be coiled up like a party blower under your head. To feed, your tongue would straighten out like a straw and suck up the flower's sweet nectar. You would be 200 times more sensitive to sweet things than a human is. Wow. A tasty test. Compare how you and a butterfly taste sweet things with this simple experiment. You'll need water, an empty two liter bottle, a clean large bucket or basin, sugar, a large spoon and a bowl. Number one, pour six bottles of water into the bucket. Stir in one tablespoon of sugar. Taste the sugar solution. Can you taste the sweetness of the water? Now pour about a quarter of a cup of water into a bowl and add one tablespoon of sugar. Stir well and then taste the sugar solution. How does it compare to the solution in the bucket? This solution is about 200 times sweeter than the bucket solution. You should find that the sugar solution in the bucket did not taste sweet because there was so little sugar compared to the amount of water. The solution in the bowl should have tasted very sweet. It's hard for you to taste the sweetness in the bucket solution, but a butterfly would find it very sweet. In fact, it would taste as sweet to the butterfly as the solution of the bowl tasted to you. Tasting without tongues. Butterflies, moths, and flies test with their taste with their feet, and many other insects taste with their antenna. Mussels and scallops, those are bivalves or clam-like animals that live in the ocean, they test their food with their tentacles. If you were a catfish, you could tell if something was good to eat by swimming close to it because your body would be covered in taste buds. Wow. I don't know if I'd want my whole body covered in taste buds and then walk into a crowd. Seems like oh, it might smell a lot of things you don't want to. Talented tongues. Pour some milk into a saucer and try lapping it up the way a cat does. It's not as easy as it sounds. A cat's tongue is very rough, so the milk holds on to the tongue as the cat drinks. Cats also use their tongues to clean and brush their fur. Check out the other talented tongues on this page. A giraffe's tongue is protected by, from the sun with a natural sunscreen while it picks leaves from the tree treetops. Wow, I never heard of that before. Woodpeckers have extra long sticky tongues that are perfect for catching insects for food. Snails have toothy tongues for shredding plants before eating them. Lizards use their tongues to clean their eyes. A toad's tongue is attached at the front of its mouth so it can flip out a long way to catch a tasty fly. We're not gonna be going out to our um, sit spots to use our sense of taste today because we don't know what is safe to eat outside. But I hope you'll be extra aware of your sense of taste today as you eat snack 
as you eat dinner and lunch and try to think and describe some of those tastes that you experience. Now I want to talk about some surprising senses beyond our five senses. This says, um, in addition to the five basic senses of sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch, some animals have super senses that can detect things people can't. Imagine having a built-in compass so that you'd never get lost or being able to feel the electricity given off by an approaching friend. Read on to find out more about these surprising senses. Rattlesnakes use heat-sensitive pits on their face to find warm-blooded prey. The heat signals from, excuse me, the heat signals form an infrared image that shows the snake where to strike, even if the snake can't see the prey with its eyes. That's cool. Sharks, platypuses, and rays can sense the electricity given off by nearby creatures. This makes it easy to zoom in on a meal. There are these, um, these little holes around the nose of a shark and they're super, super sensitive. Migrating birds have a built-in compass that can detect the magnetic field of Earth. This helps them know what direction to fly in. Superhuman senses. You may not be able to see heat images the way a rattlesnake does, but with the help of infrared photography, it's possible to take heat pictures of hidden, warm-blooded creatures. People have invented some amazing tools, such as microscopes, telescopes, x-ray machines, ultrasound, lasers, and metal detectors to help us extend our senses beyond our natural limits. Blood-sucking animals such as mosquitoes and vampire bats have built-in heat sensors to help locate warm-bodied animals to feed on. They don't, feel, they don't feed on people, they feed on um, warm bodied, bodied animals like mammals, like cows and um, things like that in the areas where they live. Instead of doing your observe, think, wonder today, we're going to um, we're at, we're going to still do it, but we're going to do it of something that you eat as part of a meal, something that has a unique taste that you would like to describe. So go in um, to Seesaw and see if you can add a picture of what you're eating into your Observe, Think, Wonder. And then as you use your sense of taste for that food, tell us what you observe using your tongue and try to be as descriptive as you can about the flavors, not an opinion of the flavors like yummy or yucky, but try to describe how it feels in your mouth, how it tastes, you can compare it to other things. What do you think about those flavors? What makes you say that? And when do you wonder about those flavors or that food?